Key Figures Stat Summary Tabulating our charts data We wanted to get a table of all our growth analysis figures. In the process we recorded all our key figures and so can summarize them here. Note to censors we use only government data. If you have a problem with the results, speak to the government. We'll use an innocuous statistic, the country's population, to introduce these particular styles of chart. I needed something generic. We can do specific later. What you're looking at is abnormality on the left, y-axis, and the value of the statistic on the bottom, x-axis. Abnormality is measured as standard deviations from the mean. You can check the exact figures on Wiki, but basically one standard deviation either side of the mean, that's two-thirds of the data points. Two standard deviations is 95%, three standard deviations is 99.7%. It's actually 68%, 95 and 99.7%. What we're seeing is that most of the data points are clustered in the 0 to 150 range. So less than 1 million to 150 million population, with a few above 200 million and just two, India and China, at 1.4 billion. Now for any set of values we can calculate a mean and a standard deviation. That doesn't mean that the data points are normally distributed, but if they were, those would be the values we need. And of course, any set of data points will have an average, or mean. So we can see at the top that the average population of a country is 36.2 million, with a standard deviation of 139 million. We can easily calculate a min and a max here, 0.01 million, or 10,000, and 1407 million, or 1.4 billion. The z-value is where it gets interesting. That's how many standard deviations from the mean, with a mean height of 5 foot 10 for men, standard deviation 3 inches, I'm 6 inches over the mean at 6 foot 4, or 6 over 3 equals 2 standard deviations, or z equals 2. Basically, I'm unusually tall, 2 standard deviations, but not extremely tall, 3 standard deviations, or absurdly tall more than three standard deviations, or more than six foot seven inches. Like weather warnings, going up one in the scale is actually dramatically more powerful in weather, or more rare in distributions. You can see how rare by saying that if countries' populations were normally distributed, China and India are one in 26,000 million million million. But political borders are just matters of history and land area. There's no causative reason or other justification for saying that population is normal, as to a political or geographical country's population. Lots of small islands, lots of small populations. So what? No biggie. Nevertheless, it gives you a sense of how to look at or read these charts. And yes, each one will be linear. For a given standard deviation, as you increase the value, you increase the standard deviations away from the mean, wherever that mean is. Here is our key interest, tabulating the growth decline figures, how fast the growth rate declines, to get the mean and see the standard deviation. You'll recall, maybe, that 0.985 was popular, likewise 0.989, with 0.97 for sharp peak countries and 0.99 for late countries. Understanding that our choice of starting date meant that late contagions would be unusually slow declining, 0.99 is just part of not reading these figures blind. Still, we get a figure of 0.9838, a little below 0.985, with quite a few fast peak countries, it seems. Again, bear in mind that these were autofit data, which is generally reasonable, but we're not going to go to court with it. It's not a bad figure, though, and gives us a sense statistically that is consistent with what we saw by looking through the charts one by one. In case this all sounds like gibberish, it's simply recording the pale blue figures top left. The autofit normal is the smooth blue normal curve. Its growth decline line is the pale blue descending line. And 0.9517, a high rate of decline, is the gradient except it's a reduction factor. Today's growth equals 0.9517 times yesterday's. The death rate for the auto fit through a wobbly and divide by zero error, but that would be the topic of the next slide. 
For deaths, we get a nice result, 0.9851, supporting our 0.985 observation for cases. Again, a proper analysis would be appropriate to refine our understanding, but yes, 0.985 seems to be a reasonable figure across the whole world and across cases and deaths. Funny how no one noticed that growth rate declines had already declined when they were selling you on the exponential mean. Nobody even looks at the contagions like this. It's all R0. But so what? R0 is dead the moment it's decided, becoming R1, R2, R3. So then you get to the dodgy model. And all the while, a pragmatic, straightforward and simple analysis provides more assurance and clarity than all the so-called sophisticated epidemiology, including Ferguson, massively fraudulent exaggeration, and the SI, SIR, SEIR models we've debunked, massively fraudulent exaggeration. It's not a good advert for science, but it's a great advert for a little amateur tinkering and common sense. Back to basics, and while cases don't mean much these days, it's still interesting to see this. So the average cases is 233,000 per 100 million population, 0.23% then, 100k and 100 million would be 1 in 1,000, k over m, or 0.1%, so 233k is 0.233%. Bear in mind that the egregiously distorted countries distort normal. We could take out the extremes first, but at the end of the day, we can live with it. You can get an idea of how widely distorted this is by the mean of 233k and a standard deviation of 433k. So the one standard deviation takes us to negative 200k cases. Yes, that's a reminder that we should be doing log normal, but it's also occurring because we have a high number of absurd figures. Again, we're not putting too much emphasis on it, and there's another reason. 10 cases on an island with 1,000 people is a 1% hit rate, and we haven't filtered out small islands. Bottom line, pinch of salt, but just enjoy seeing the whole world at a glance. When next you look at New York City, though, and see whatever it is in the millions, remember this chart. The rest of the world, most of it, is down at the left-hand corner. It's not unusual sitting way up there in the stratosphere. Of course not. Deaths is likely a bit more sensible, average of 9k per 100 million population, or about 4 days worth, we gave up democracy worldwide for 4 days deaths. Pretty sad, huh? Normal deaths are nominally 9 per thousand, 900k per annum, for 100 million, or 2464 per day. So here's New York City, 223,000 deaths. So that's New York City, top right, and it's not so unreasonable to speak of an average experience in terms of COVID deaths. So when we see that the max is a 1 in 174 billion billion possibility of being normal, we may not cite that in court, but yeah, New York City isn't normal. It's the Cuomo virus. Deaths, death days, how many standard days mortality does COVID represent, and versus Hubei, how many times Hubei normalized deaths was it, are all the same underlying parameter with different measures, like Celsius versus Fahrenheit or miles per hour versus kilometers per hour. Here's death days with an average of 3.81, recall that 4 I said previously, and you can see the solid blob of dots at 5 and below. That's the world, most of it. And then a gradually dissipating cluster until 35, that would be Belgium, and 58, I'd have to check. We can do proper tables, the work ranking by deaths is a special case of this newly tabulated data, we can now rank the world's countries by any of these measures, and no doubt we'll do so. But for the moment, this is just light entertainment, a moment's reflection. The point is, as ever, that there's a whole world out there experiencing something very different to what's being reported in the West. And again, basically the same, but the metric here is versus Hubei, which is about two death days. Average 1.8, so 3.8 divided by 2, sort of, given Hubei's approximate two days death days. So the world did a bit worse than Hubei, distorted of course by the outliers, and with the entire Far East doing far better, or 
not far better. Again, after this, when you see an outlier like New York City or Belgium or the UK, hopefully there'll be more of a sense of how did that get there. Normal? Not really. Of course, I should have introduced this with cases, but as we've got versus Hubei in deaths, we've also got versus Hubei in cases. With the whole world bottom left, you've got to wonder about the ones that are up and out there in the wilderness top right. Daily mortality max is the day with the highest deaths reported. What did that represent as a percentage of normal mortality per day? 2464 per day for a 100 million population. Given that we didn't filter for small islands or for governments correcting data with absurd spikes, I wouldn't lose sleep over the outliers, but they're worth bearing in mind next time you see the Black Pyramid. In the Far East, New Zealand top or Korea below have basically a small bump, barely visible in the third panel at the bottom. Whereas New York City is literally off the chart, over 100% at 292%, and Italy is up at 60%. Bit of a difference versus the Far East, but no one noticed. These are our charts that you'd see in our standard chart updates, and to understand them, there's the Chart and Stats Essentials introductory video. So yes, distorted to the high side by outliers maybe, but still, the worst that Covid could do was a third of a normal day's deaths. For one day. Because that will have been a peak. Anyone think they've overplayed this just a little? Overall mortality, and like the growth decline slides, this is a real peach. The world experience of COVID overall, since first COVID death in each country, is that COVID deaths represent 0.0269 or 2.69% of overall mortality, probably down around with what? Choking? Falling? Road deaths are around 0.28% of deaths in the UK, so COVID has proven 10 times more dangerous than road use. For the US, I think it's more like 2.69% versus 1.18%, so frankly not far off. Ban road travel because it's a threat to life? Uh-huh. Belgium 23% and New York City 61%, so that's two of our outliers. Who's 37%? Possibly a small island, we'll have to wait till we do tables. But 23% versus an average of 2.69%? Poor Belgium. Did someone remember send flowers? Or clap? Maybe flowers at 23% for Belgium and clap for 61% from New York City. Really? The overall death rate, latest deaths over latest cases, which by now should be pretty accurate providing the testing mania hasn't done too much damage, at 0.0378, a little under 4%, it's not far off the original Chinese 4% or so. Gee, China lied, or not. Funny that. So the whole world gets away with a 4% death rate. And what are we at? 14.3%. Belgium, 15.7%. Bear in mind, for the, from the risk by age, that implies an average age of 80 plus. Gee, we must have a lot of 90 to 100 year olds to balance all the youngsters at 50 plus dying. Or did we just wipe out our entire OAP population? From some of the stories, and Skepticat definitely waking me up to that, maybe the UK did just that. The point is, this is going to be pretty much a heads up. This is going to be very interesting when we focus on principal nations and tidy up the anomalies. And a nice one to finish up with, implied death rate when we lag 14 days. You're not supposed to die the day you enter hospital. Germany has a proper 14 days lag between cases and deaths, the red-blue peaks at bottom, so it isn't phased by dividing deaths today over cases 14 days ago. Spain, it's a different matter, 532%, five times as many people dying of Covid as had Covid. Oops. That 35% figure, 0.3579, Seems high, so we'll have to see what happens when we focus on normal and exclude the outliers. But maybe there are indeed a lot of countries who've been padding their death counts. We'll see. A bit of fun illustrating a new capability. No doubt we'll do some more formal analysis and publish ranking tables based on the table we've now accumulated from the individual country's data. 
I'm Andrew Mather, a 60-year-old Brit, mathematician, financier, technologist, husband, biker, pilot, healer, whatever. Feel free to get in touch, andrew at peerlessreads.com or andrewamather.com. Either should get to me. <laughs>